Now, when it comes to connecting and transforming data, the query editor is our cockpit. Now in Power BI, from the Home tab, you can click Edit Queries to launch the query editor. And there's a lot going on here. We're gonna be spending most of our time in this section right here in the editor itself, but let's take a minute to break down the components of this interface. Right up there at the top, we've got our query editing toolbox. This is where we'll find all of the tools that we'll use to shape and transform our data. Right beneath that, you'll see a formula bar and it's got some unfamiliar code in there. This is called M code, and I didn't write it. This is code that's automatically generated as you apply different procedures or steps to your table. For those of you who are advanced Excel users, this is exactly what VBA does as it automatically generates Visual Basic code while you record a macro. Now, don't get nervous because you don't need to even know M code to use the query editor. In fact, we really won't be touching M code at all in this course. You can write custom M code from scratch and you can edit the M code that's automatically generated for you, but you don't need to in order to use all of the tools that we're gonna cover in this course. Now on the left side of the query editor, we've got our queries or query list. Here you can see that I've got nine individual connections or data queries in place. You can click through to see previews of your data you can edit the properties, change the applied steps. Basically, any modification that you want to make to an existing query, you can do so here. And as you select individual queries, you'll see this data preview in the middle of the screen update. This is where we can spot check and QA our data and do things like change column types and headers. On the right side, we've got our properties pane. The most important thing to call out here is the table name. Now, it's really important to be strategic and clear with your table names right off the bat, because it can be a pretty big headache to change them later on, especially if you've already referenced them in multiple calculated fields and measures. So rule of thumb, be strategic and careful about your table names from step one. And then last but certainly not least, the applied steps pane here in the lower right. This is really, really powerful because what's happening here is that every time you make a change to your data, Every time you apply some sort of shaping or transformation operator, Power BI will record an applied step using that M code and add it to the list here. And what that means is that every time this connection is refreshed, Power BI will run through that same set of applied steps to shape and transform your data. And that's a great way to automate things like data cleansing or ETL processes. You don't wanna end up running the same processes manually over and over and over every time you connect to the data. This automates that process for you. You record it once and then you're good to go moving forward. But perhaps the most helpful thing is that none of this is set in stone. You can click on the X next to any individual step to remove it. You can click through each of your applied steps to actually visually see the impact that it's having on your table. Or you can click the gear icon on the right to modify or edit individual steps in the process. Now, moving on into the query editing tools, I wanna to take a minute to introduce the three primary tabs or categories. First, we've got our home tab. This includes some general settings, data source settings, parameters, table properties, etc., as well as some of the most common table transformation tools. The next tab, transform, includes additional tools that allow you to modify your existing columns. You can split or group columns, you can transpose your table, extract text, etc. And then finally, the add column tools actually create brand new columns in your table. And you can define those new columns based on things like conditional rules or text operations, calculations, date operators, etc. From here on out, we're going to jump into demo mode, actually get our hands dirty, and practice working with these tools. Got a lot to cover, so let's dive in.